All right, so now I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy correlation table displaying correlations between many different pairs of values all at the same time using Microsoft Excel. So we're going to go to our sample data tab and we are going to take this data and put it into a new tab here where we're going to go ahead and create those correlation table. So here we go. There we go, highlight it. And see, it's got all of our data there. We'll go to copy. We'll come here and we're going to create a new sheet. And let's paste it here. And let's go ahead and call this correlation tables. All right. Now, remember those pesky outliers that we had to get rid of here, right? We had the person with 10 children and the person that had 25 missed classes. We got rid of them here and so we're going to go ahead and get rid of them here as well. We don't want those extreme values to artificially inflate the observed relationships or correlations that we see in our data. So let's go ahead and find them. So our missed days outlier was 25. Boom, there's that person. Sorry man, you're gone. Right click on the number there if you want to. Or actually you could just do this and right click and go to delete, shift cells up, yes please. Now let's find that poor person with 10 children. Here we go, I have two and I'm overwhelmed. Um, all right, here we go, 10. Let's just see if we can highlight that whole row and do it. So I just click the number, right click, and yeah, you can do, do it that way and just hit delete. And then it doesn't even ask you about shifting cells. Awesome, okay. So again, we've got 48, rows of data, right, because that first row was for the labels. So we know we got rid of two outliers and ready to just bust out a correlation table. So let's do it. So here, I'm not just looking at number of children as a predictor. I'm also going to look at hours of nightly sleep and typical weekly work hours to see how that's correlated with missed days of class this semester. Now, I already know number of children is not correlated significantly with missed days of class this semester once we remove the outliers, but I'm including it anyway because I'm kind of curious if it's related to these two variables. So here we go. We're going to highlight, oh, sorry. We're going to go to data, got ahead of myself, data analysis, and select correlation, not regression. We're not testing the significance using the p-values. We're just going to do a correlation table. So here we go. OK. Our input range is going to be our data. So you want to highlight all of that data, OK? And again, you can't just do the, the, the columns here because correlation doesn't run with missing data. And if you tried to highlight the columns, it would include all this stuff down here. If you are running this analysis and you have any missing data on your own, make sure you delete the entire row for anybody who has any missing values or the entire row for anybody who has an outlier. In Excel, again, you can't just delete the outlier score because then there's missing data and it will not run. So you have to use listwise deletion in Excel, which basically means that if anybody has an outlier or missing data, they're excluded from the entire analysis for all the correlations instead of just excluded from you know the correlation just between a pair of values that includes that variable that they had an outlier or missing data for. So it's a little bit conservative, but that's just the way we have to do it in Excel. Okay, anyway, we got our labels in the first row. Make sure that is checked. We're grouping by columns. Our output range, that's fine. It's going to go right about here, and let's click OK. All right, so let's go ahead and format this. Let's make these numbers rounded to the hundreds place. So we'll just highlight the values there, right click, and go to Format Cells, Number, two decimal places. We don't need that third decimal place because we're not working with p-values here. See, there's no p-values given to us, which is kind of annoying, but we have our ways. We'll figure out what the significance is here in a sec. All right, so let's clean up this table a little bit from a formatting perspective because I am not loving the way it looks right now. We'll get it kind of close to APA style in Excel just so that if you ever do this on your own, you'll be ready. All right, so missed days of class this semester. We can just say missed days, and I'm going to edit it up here if you see, missed days of class. Okay, great. Enter. This is number of children. We can leave that as is. Average hours of nightly sleep last week. So we could just say mm, average 
average hours of sleep just to clean it up a little bit let's go ahead and move this up here see how it was kind of down here so I just got rid of that all right and let's fix this one too typical we could just put weekly work hours and make sure that we have that all on the same line and there's no extra spacing cool all right now let's go ahead and number these so I'll just double click in and edit it in here this is gonna be one Oh, goodness, and four. Okay, and then up here, now we can do one, two, three, and four. See how that cleaned up our table pretty nicely? Now we can kind of stretch this out, even do a little double click action. And let's go ahead and auto fit the height here, because see how there's just too much room? We don't need all that. So we'll just highlight this, go home, format, auto fit, row height. Oh, look at that. Now I can talk about what these values mean. I couldn't even think about them before because they were bothering me. All right, so here we go. Let's zoom in so you can see this. All right, these ones, we don't need them. They're just kind of a placeholder for variable one correlated with variable one. Of course, that's gonna be a perfect correlation because it's the exact same values. So we're gonna get rid of these. In research reports, that's where you would put Cronbach's alpha, which is the measure of how reliable each one of these scales is. But we don't even have multi-item scale scores here. We just have straight up ratio variables, so it's not to, not to worry. All right, look at the, what's going on here. I don't like it. Let's see, let me see if I can figure it out. You know what we'll do? We'll just make it even more simple. Let's just put sleep. Ha, I win. All right, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and center this as well. Right there in the home tab. There we go. Cool. So now that the table is something I can stand looking at, let's talk about these values for a second. All right. So these are negative, right? Suggesting an inverse relationship, right? Those who have higher of X tend to have lower of Y. These are all positive correlations, right? Consistent direction. Those who have more of X tend to have more of Y, albeit these are all pretty weak. So I don't know if there'd be much of a relationship there. Our strongest correlation is right here, 0.64, and that's between variable two, which is number of children, and weekly work hours. So it looks like there's a strong correlation such that those who have more kids tend to work more. All right, our next strongest correlation, right, closest to positive or negative one, furthest from zero, is this one between variable three, sleep, and weekly work hours. So it looks like students who sleep more tend to work less. Or conversely, students who work more tend to sleep less is probably what's going on there. Okay, the next strongest is right here. And that's between variable two, number of children, and sleep. Again, it's negative, so it's inverse. Those who have more children tend to sleep less. Those who have fewer children tend to sleep more. Now, before we get too confident about our explanations here, let's see if these are statistically significant. Now, unfortunately, there's no p-values in Excel. You have to use critical values if you go the correlation table route to test these. So you're not going to get an actual p-value to write up an APA write-up if you just do a correlation table. To get that p-value, you have to use that regression analysis. So let's take a look. Remember, our degrees of freedom here is going to be, we have 48, right, minus 1 because of the labels. So 48 minus 2. Is 46 degrees of freedom. So if we go here in the two-tailed, 45 is just below 46, right, since 46 degrees of freedom is not in the table. Two-tailed, alpha 0.05, alpha 0.01 is here. We're working with these critical values. So let's just copy those and paste them into our data here. So I'm just going to put 0.05, 0 0.01, and we'll paste these in. Oh, it got rid of it because I typed stuff. It's like, uh-uh, it's not going to keep it. So we'll copy you again. Copy and paste. Great. And let's just paste values here. We don't need all that stuff. So keep in mind that these critical values are two-tailed, right? So this is technically positive or negative 0.288. 
and this is technically positive or negative 0 0.372. I would physically type that in here, but if I start typing in plus signs and minus signs, Excel gets ridiculous. So I'm just not going to, and you can just remember that. All right, so if we look here, we're gonna have to evaluate based on this, but before we do, let's go ahead and add a note to our correlation table. So make sure you have italicized selected, click right below that four and type in note with a period. You can unitalicize. Two stars, italicized P, unitalicized, space, less than space, 0 0.01, comma. One star, italicized P, unitalicized, space, less than, space 0.05. So when you put stars into this table, you're going to let the reader know whether or not it's significant based on these p-values. So if we look, none of these get stars. Sorry, buddy. But all of these get two stars because they all exceed the one-tailed or two-tailed critical value for alpha of 0.01, right? Negative 0.45 exceeds negative 0.372, right? It would be to the left of that in the distribution. It would be in the tail. 0.64 exceeds positive 0.372, right? If we looked at it in the sampling distribution, 0.64 would be to the right in the tail. Negative 0.53 exceeds negative 0.372, and of course negative 0.288 on the left end of the tail, right? So these are all exceeding those critical values, and they all exceed 0.01, so they all get two stars. I'm going to try to put stars in here, but I may just recommend that you do it in Word, or you just copy this, paste it into Word and do it, because the stars get funky, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to try to format, let's copy these, okay, and paste them down here. All right, so I just have those values and I can remember what they were. Let's go ahead and delete these because they're still rounding tied to them and they were still formatted as numbers. Okay. And let's format all of this area, right click, format cells as text. Treat it as text even when a number is in the cell. Displayed exactly as entered. Let's hope this works. All right. So I'm, I still have to physically type it in or it gets weird. 0 0.12, no stars. 0 0.10, no stars. Oops, I messed up my zero. Zero point, okay. Negative 0 0.18, no stars for you. Negative 0 0.45, two stars. And then 0 0.64, two stars, enter. And then negative 0 0.53, two stars. Enter. If you try to click outside of a cell to, to leave when you're putting your stars in, it's going to go wonky. So you have to hit enter after you click or you enter those stars. All right. So now we have a beautiful correlation table that shows we have significant relationships between variable number two, which is number of children, and sleep and weekly work hours. And there's also a significant relationship between variable three, sleep, and weekly work hours. All right, so now you could put this into a Word document, add a title, and you would be ready to submit a journal article. All right, so I hope this was fun for you and you are enjoying correlation and you feel ready to tackle this on your own.